Today we'll be starting a new series on becoming a carrier of the glory of God. Are you with me? If I hear your amen, take a portion. The topic of this morning is when God comes in the likeness of men. When God comes in the likeness of men. If you're here, say yes. See, there's something happening around the world that a few persons who are discerning can notice. You notice that ordinary people, young and old, are manifesting God in unusual dimensions. People are just popping up everywhere manifesting God. And some of them are people who don't look like you want them to look. Never be surprised by the unusual. Just make sure you are part of the flow. Are you hearing me? Their hair may not be cut the way you like. They may wear jeans that is torn. They may not look like the normal religious people. But they will carry a glory. And while you are looking for pastors and prophets, you will see small children manifesting in their own dimensions. May you be one of them. Yeah. You know, in Numbers chapter 11, there was a story in verse 16 to 17, and then 25 to 29. God said to Moses, gather some elders. I will take the spirit that is in you and put in them. Are you with me? Huh? So Moses gathered 70. How many did he gather? He told them, come. So God was to take the spirit in Moses and put in those men. God was to take the spirit that's in Moses and put in those men. And uh, are you with me? Now, hello? Now, the challenge is this. When they came for the meeting, instead of 70 elders, only 68 came. Two didn't show up. Those two were in the camp. And then God took the spirit upon Moses and released it. Guess what? Those of them that were even in the camp who didn't attend meeting were prophesying in the camp. Joshua got annoyed. He said, why are they prophesying in the camp? Moses stopped them. Moses said, calm down. My prayer is that all the lost people will be prophets. I want everybody to have the capacity to manifest what we are manifesting. Can you lift your hand? May you be one of those manifesting. Yeah. I wish I could hear your amen. Yeah. I wish I could hear your amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Okay, so you see, look up here. How many of you notice that any time a man is engaged to any lady and uh, walking toward the wedding, no matter how poor that lady is, if the man has a little money, as the wedding is approaching, her dressing is changing. You see new wristwatch. You see an iPhone. Come on, talk to me. You see her manicure and pedicure is becoming something else. As the day is approaching, the man is beautifying his bride. Is that true? You see, that's one of the things you need to know about Jesus. Jesus is the bridegroom. The church is the bride. And as the end of time is approaching, Jesus is beautifying the church. Ephesians chapter 5 said that he may present it unto himself, a glorious church. Jesus will not come for a poor quashore called church. He is coming for a church that he has beautified. Come on, are you with me? So before the rapture, there is a lifting. Can you lift your hand? May you be part of that lifting. You see, what your concern should be is not whether God is going to do anything or not. No, God is going to do something new. What your prayer should be, Lord, whatever you are doing in this season, don't do it without me. May you not be a spectator of the glory. 
may you be a partaker of it. A lot of Christians are going to miss out the glory because they are living their life with Christianity as an appendage. They are not immersed in it. They don't want to see more of God. But I believe that I'm raising a church of people who are passionate for God. This is a church where men genuinely encounter God. This is a church of God's first people. It's not just a mantra. It's a life I live. It's a thing I pursue. And I'm asking you to be part of that journey. Lift up your hand. May you encounter the supernatural. You see, I need you to remember this as we take this journey in a few minutes. I let you go. Every believer is a carrier of God and a representative of the kingdom of God. You carry the kingdom of God. You represent the kingdom of God. You know, in Luke chapter 17, Luke 17, 20 and 21, they were asking Jesus a question. Luke 17, 20, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observations. Kingdom doesn't come by ceremony. Look at the next verse. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is where? Within you. Can you touch yourself and say, this kingdom, this kingdom. is within me. Is within me. Can I say, this kingdom, this kingdom. is within me. I need you to understand that the kingdom is within you. Amen? Amen. 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 You know, you remember the story many years ago. Some of you were here were too young for that to know, remember? Uh, when they said they wanted to do uh, International Council of Witches, wanted to do their meeting in Benin many years ago. Some of you remember and it was in the news, and many Christians were praying, and all kinds of things. Then Papi Dehosa was still alive. And Papi Dehosa said, as long as I'm in Benin, they can't hold it there. And then, uh, the man that was convening the meeting said to Papi Dehosa, he said, even if God is here physically, he can't stop us. Papi Dehosa said to him, that God doesn't need to come, that's why I'm here. He said, God, does, God, does, God won't come. Me, I am here. I will stop you. You see, there are many things God doesn't need to come. As long as you are there, you can stop the devil. Lift up your hand and say, I'm in this family. Nothing will go wrong. Of course, you know the end of the story. Uh, they never came. Are you with me? And the man who wanted to lead them never continued being a witch. Because somebody dewitched his witchcraft. <laughs> I lift my hand over you. And anywhere you go, may you plan the kingdom. Yeah. You see, many times we pray stupid prayers. I told the pastors I mentor. I mean, you go to some churches in the village particularly. And sometimes in town, you see them clapping. Oh God, come down and manifest your power. Oh God, come down and they're sweating and shouting. That is a yeah, yeah prayer. God will never come down. He has never come once, he won't come. It's not his plan. If you hear, what I'm saying, if you hear me say yes. God does not manifest to the world. God only manifests to his people. He manifests to us, we manifest to the world. I don't think you heard me. That's why if you look at John chapter 14, there was a conversation that Jesus had with his disciples. He started from verse 8. He went over to verse uh, 23. Philip said to him, show us the father and he sufficeth us. Philip was saying to Jesus, he said, Jesus, you say you are going to the father. Can you show us this father? And we'll be satisfied. Just reveal this father to us. Look at what Jesus answered him. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that had seen me has seen the father. And how sayest thou then, show us the father? 
You see, the world out there is asking us, reveal God to us, reveal God. Where is this God? Where is this God? This is a question that Philip asked Jesus. Jesus said, are you, are you okay? I've been hanging around you. Are you are still asking me to see, show God, you God? If you see me, you see God. Now, to underline that, I don't have all the time to read all the passages. Look at uh, verse uh, 19 there. Look at verse 19. Jesus said, yet a little while, and the world see yet me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. Now look at the next verse. At that day, you shall know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I, we are in you. So, the same thing Jesus talked about Philip. Anyone that see me has seen the Father. He said, a day is coming that that will be you telling others, whoever sees me sees God. Who is like that? Lift your hand. May they see God in you. Yeah. Look at verse 21. Follow me, follow me verse 21. He that hath my commandment and keepeth them. He it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him. And we manifest myself to him. Now wait, wait, wait. Don't forget where we started. Philip said, show us the father. We want God to manifest. Jesus said, you, he won't manifest. And if you see me, you don't see him. Are you here? Now Jesus is saying to Philip, I'm going now. The world won't see me again. But now they're going to see you. Are you guys hearing me? No, no. So I'm going to manifest to you just like the father manifests in me. Look at the next verse. Another question. Look at the next one. Now Judas said unto him, this one not be Iscariot, Jude, the one that wrote the book of Jude, said to him, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Why don't you manifest to the world? Why are you always talking about us? Next verse. Jesus answered and said to him, if a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. So, when a man loves me, I come and live in him and with him. So, this man moves, I move. He talks, I talk. He goes, I go. Wherever he appears, I appear. So, why do I need to manifest when I'm manifesting through him? Can you lift your hand? From today, may you be the manifestation of God. Somebody just missed an opportunity for an encounter. I say, may you be the manifestation of God. That's why you need to know that signs are not reserved for special people. No. Signs are for all that believe. Somebody say, everyone. everyone. Look up here. You see, this week I'm going to minister to you in diverse ways. But I need you to understand. We minister to you not to allow you become dependent on us. Yes, I know, I know. Some of you need once in a while to see a man of God. And I'm available for that. There are some men here who are suffering too much, who are too arrogant to say, Pastor, lay hands on me. That's not what I'm talking about. There are sometimes you're going through something, you walk up to your man of God and say, Pastor, lay hands on me. But if your custom is every week you go to Pastor to lay hands on you, that's a nasty custom. You don't do that. If you hear my voice, say yes. Once in a while, man of God, lay hands on me. Once in three months, once in six months. Depending on what your challenge is. That's enough. Are you hearing me? Uh, are you hearing me? Jesus said in Mark chapter 16, he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Mark 16, 15 to 18. He said, in my name, they will cast out devils. In my name, they will speak in other tongues. In my name, they will take up serpents. If they drink anything, it will help them. This sign, somebody shall signs. That's your life, sir. That's where you belong. Many times people sit in church and they get baptized in the Holy Ghost and they talk in tongues. The Bible said in Jude chapter 2, it said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Come on, are you here? If you help me, say yes. You see, I like people that experiment with things. I like people that try to see whether some things work. Are you with me? This passage, I like it with my daughter. 
mission. I always see her trying to, trying to apply it in the house. Sons and daughters shall prophesy. Papa, daddy, lay hands on me. I want to know whether this thing works. And then she'll have a revelation and you confirm it. Revelation, confirm, revelation, confirm. So after some time, you begin to be sure that at least I carry something. He said, this is a gift for sons and daughters. If you help me, say yes. yes. Sons and daughters. And you here are my children in the Lord. He said, I and the children whom the Lord has given to me, we are for what? Signs and for wonders. That's what I want to see in you. Dimensions of the supernatural. If you hear, say yes. First Peter 2 verse 9. He said you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar person of people. He said that you may show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous side. You are a royal priesthood. That means you are not just priests. You are kings that are priests. You are businessmen that are priests. You are politicians that are priests. You are housewives that are priests. Are you with me? You are royalty. And you still carry the oil of priesthood. Who does that look like? Think of David. Who does that look like? Think of Melchizedek. The Bible says Melchizedek was a king of Salem. And was a priest of the most high God. David will wear his effort. And was a king and a man of war. I want to see politicians. I want to see businessmen. That are anointed. And who know they are anointed. Who walk into situations. And they speak God into that situation. Lift your hand and say I am that one. Shall I turn that I am that one. Our text for today is Acts chapter 14, 7 to 15. I'm talking to you on God coming in the likeness of man. The Bible says, and there they preach the gospel. Acts chapter 14, verse 7, verse 8 now. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had worked. This guy is hearing Paul preaching. He has never walked. The same had Paul speak. Who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Paul looked at the man. That while the man was listening to him, the man's faith was built up. What did he say Paul do? Next verse. Paul said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. And the man leaped and walked. Now this guy was sitting, hearing Paul preaching until his faith was built up. Paul could sense the faith. You know, there are many times you are preaching to people, you can't sense the faith. There are meetings that the moment the atmosphere charges up, you will know. What I'm saying is that true. You can sense the faith of people have risen. At that moment, anything can happen. Anything can drop. Lift up your hand. In this meeting now, take your portion. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Liconia, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. They said the gods. But here we say God come. Lift up your hand. People don't get tired of me. Lift your hand and shout father. father. Louder than your neighbor father. father. I, believe I believe. In this city. I will be one of the God. Walking the city. Father, father. You will come to the city. In the likeness of men. Through my life. Can your amen be like thunder. That's what happens. Amen. 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 Now, how do men manifest this God nature? Our time is gone. I don't want to spend too much on this. How do men manifest this God nature? The first thing, steer, we manifest when we steer up the gifts in us. We manifest when we steer up the gifts in us. Secondly, we manifest when we carry the burdens of God. Thirdly, we manifest when we walk in boldness of faith. But let me start with this. We manifest when we stir up the gifts that are in us. Can you touch your neighbor and say, stir up that gift? <laughs> if you hear my voice, say yes. yes. You know, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, from verse 5, Paul was speaking to his protege, Timothy. He said, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, 
Quick dwell first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice. And I am persuaded that in thee also. Paul is saying, I saw faith in your grandmother. I saw faith in your mother. And you were raised well. I believe that faith is in you. Can I ask anybody here? The faith in me, is it in you? Yes. Let me ask again. Anybody here, the faith in me, is it in you? Yes, sir. Can you boldly say that the faith in your man of God is in you? Yes, sir. Lift up your hand. As you leave here now, may that faith manifest. He yes. said, said, there is something I saw in your grandmother and I saw in you. Next verse. He said, we are for. I put thee in remembrance. That thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee, by the putting on of my hand. He said, there's something that is in you. It came by impartation. Stir it up. Next verse. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Are we in gateway? Sir, so listen. Listen. Is it to steer something is to awaken it? Is to move it into activity. Are you with me? Huh? And there's so much in you that you are not steering. And it's time we steer it up. The grace is in you. The gift is in you. The faith is in you. You know, many of you don't actually know how powerful you are until challenges come. And maybe I'm going to pray that challenges will come. So that, no, you didn't hear me. So that you can know that something, you know, <laughs> are you with me? I told you I heard of a photographer. I don't know whether it's National Geographic or whatever. One of these uh, people that go on safari and take pictures of animals. This guy was busy in the safari and was taking some pictures. And then suddenly he turned and saw this lion. When he saw the lion, you know, lion was looking at lunch. He knew I am done. He turned, wanting to run. The lion wasn't running. He was just walking majestically, coming for his lunch. You're not hearing me. The man ran. He wanted to grab a tree and climb. Ran and jumped. His hand didn't reach the tree. He fell down. By then, he has dropped his camera. Now, the lion is now deciding to move a little faster. When the man turned and saw the lion trail coming closer, he turned again and ran. Brothers and sisters, that tree branch he tried to catch and his hand didn't reach it. His hand caught the next one. <laughs> no, you didn't hear me. Do you know why he was able to jump that high? The lion was a motivation. Brothers and sisters, some of you need trouble so that something can steer in you. I stretch my hand toward you. May the grace in you come out. Amen. Can I hear your amen? amen? Do you know, uh, well, I'm not a good cook. Are you with me? I'm not a very good cook. But I, I, if you are cooking soup now, do you steer it when you are cooking it? Yes, eh? Yes. Eh? Yes. When you want to know whether there's salt in the soup, don't you steer it and then test it. Okay, if you are cooking soup and you put salt and you didn't stir it and you tested it, you may not know whether the salt is enough. Right? So let's say you took the upper part and tested it and the salt didn't test well, you added more. And then after some time, you didn't stir it again, you tested it again. You didn't feel it, you added more. You didn't test again, you stirred it. Uh, you are saying no. Why are you saying no? But that's what we keep doing in church. We keep adding upon you more anointing, more impartation, and you're not steering something. Now look at you now, you are oversalted. <laughs> no, you're not here. <laughs> you are useless to God, useless to man. Nobody can eat you. Oversalted Christians. It's time for you to steer something. No, there's something in you. Only a foolish person will put needle and milo and sugar in a cup of tea and not stir it up. If you don't stir it, the richness will not come out. Is that true? 
He says, tear up the gift that is, the gift is already there. Touch them and say, it's there. Second Corinthians 4 verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Why is it that people despise the gift in them? The treasure is in earthen vessels. Are you here? If you have my voice, say yes. yes. Somebody say earthen vessels. Yes. Say louder, earthen vessels. Yes. Say louder, earthen vessels. Yes. Do you know that there are some human beings in this country that cannot be caught dead holding black soap? But they will hold hot lock soap. Now, the average person here who knows a little bit about the science of soap and all of that knows that there is more in that black soap than in the lock soap. But because of one, one that is packaged well, you despise the one that can make your body well and buy the one that will wash off something from your body. They didn't hear me. Is anybody hearing me? Uh-uh. Are you here? <laughs> I'm thinking I'm wasting my time. You see, you see, you see, it's packaging. Someone say packaging. packaging. So when, when you look at yourself and you look at the challenges in your family, your education level, you are in quote challenges of uh, sin and problems here and there, you tell yourself, there's nothing inside me. Sir, the treasure is in earthen vessels. God is not looking for golden vessels. He's not looking for silver vessels. He's not looking for any kind of vessel other than yielded vessels. No matter what vessel you are, if you are yielded, you are useful. I think this, this service... May no service be like you today. Come, is anybody hearing my voice here? Too? Lift your hand and shout, I'm a yielded vessel. Screaming like thunder, I am a yielded vessel. Shout again, I am a yielded vessel. Sir, God is looking for yielded vessel. The treasure is in you, don't despise it. That you don't have money doesn't mean the vessel, the glory is not there. I say something to you, not okay, not to you, to the pastors I mentor some time ago. I say, why help God gave to me when I was a younger Christian? Was when he asked me, look at the native doctor in your village. He said, you can learn something from him. And I know the man. If you are coming to his compound, you see a tree in front of the compound. They will kill chicken and put there and the chicken will be decaying on the tree. That's how excellent entering his compound is. You are not hearing me. I went to school with some of his children. In fact, two of his children were in my class in school. And if the class is 28 persons in the class, one will take 27, one will take 28. No, you didn't hear me. Are you hearing me? They are alive. I'm not lying against them. They will take first from behind. Hello? But that same native doctor, women in the village will take their children about to write exam, carry Byro, go to his house, make sacrifice for them to pass. They didn't ask him, what of your children? The funny thing is, the day I went to the village, when God said, go and look around his house, I didn't enter his house, but I, I looked around it. As I got there, I saw a black 544 in those days parked in front of the house. So I asked, tinted windows. They said the deputy governor went to see him. Deputy governor of my state at that time. I said, what? The deputy governor came to look for this man and passed through this place with this uh, decaying chicken. And it dawned on me. What God wanted to show me was that as broke as I was, living in somebody's boy's quarter, can't afford anything. The power is not about what you have. Power is about the control you have over life. I stepped out of that place with boldness and I told myself, if this man can bless people, I can. Can you lift up your hand? I speak over you. As you go, 
May power come out of here. If I hear you, amen, you take your portion. It is impossible to live the supernatural life if you don't see yourself carrying the supernatural. The Bible says your bodies are the temples of the Holy Ghost. You are a mobile altar. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. You are a mobile shrine. A temple is a shrine. It's an altar. Anywhere you are moving, an altar is moving. Understand that. When people tell an altar is fighting me, tell them me to I'm an altar fighting that altar. If you hear my voice, say yes. yes. When we entered the Lepran on the other side, and there was one strange spirit. When I say this, some people get frightened, but it's the truth. There was one strange spirit at that time that used to stand at that junction where there's a flyover now. It was only me that saw it. Multiple preachers saw it. And nobody could address it. People were scared because of that thing that was a ruling spirit over the place. Every time I come to church after that incident, and I will scream from the altar, I say, I am the ruling spirit in this territory. The members of the church didn't know why I was saying that. Because the Bible said he make it his ministers a flaming fire. I am, I am a senior spirit to that spirit. Because man is first the spirit. Am I talking to somebody here today? You can't be a territorial spirit over my territory. I am the senior spirit here. Can you lift up your hand? I take authority over whatever is harassing you. From today, let the yoke break. Let the altars go down. I can't hear you. Amen. So hear me. You know, I told you. In the next two minutes, whether I finish your sermon or not, I'm, I, I will let you go home. We'll continue with better people later. <laughs> Come on, are you hearing me? <laughs> now, now, you know, there's a man, many of you have read about him, they call him Smith, Smith Wigglesworth. Anybody heard of him? Now, Smith Wigglesworth was called the apostle of faith. He used, he's a British man. He used to be very anointed, very powerful. Very, very. And he was very gruff. He wasn't a gentleman. He ministers with a kind of a roughness. But his faith was working. That's why people believed him. In fact, his record that he raised about 12 persons from the dead. And in dramatic ways. Not the one that somebody died and two minutes later he rose. That is swooning. You're not hearing me. One time somebody died, one of his people. And he was asked to come and do the funeral. And he came there. He said, no, this man is not supposed to die. I need him. He lifted the man. Hit the man on the wall. Stand! The man fell down again. People got angry. He got the man again. Push him on the wall. Stand! You're not dying. The man fell again. By the time he did the test, people were ready to slap him. By the time he did it again, the man stood. Burial was over. Life has started. Wait, wait, wait. One day they were interviewing him. And they asked him, how does God move you like this? How did you become so anointed? He said, if God doesn't move me, I move him. He said, I don't wait for God to move me. If he doesn't move me, I move him. Somebody here, it's time for you to start moving God. Lift your hand. Before this month is over, may God move on your behalf. I say, may God move on your behalf. And you manifest God to the dimension of your encounter and your boldness of faith. Sir, please listen to me. You manifest to them. Listen, this month, ask God to encounter you. And then become bolder in faith. Become bolder. Somebody say bolder. bolder. Can I ask louder? Bolder. bolder. And the more you engage the supernatural, the more your, the supernatural dimension opens to you. Engage the supernatural. How do you engage him? 2 Corinthians 3, 18, with an open face, we behold as in a glass the glory of the Lord. We are changed into the same image, even as, from glory to glory, even as the Spirit of the God. L get to the Bible. Listen to the word. Read the word. Be a man of the word. Put on the scriptures and read. In your car, put a message. In the office, put a message. As I'm teaching now, take this message, buy it, and listen again. As you are hearing, things are entering you. 
Go over there and buy some of the messages I preach to pastors. You are not a pastor, but many of the messages are power messages. Many of them are power messages. Are you with me? Uh, are you with me? Go there, pick this, this one there. I am sent. I am sent me. That message has changed churches around the world. There's another one, interpreting God. How does a man interpret God? Go pick some message that can charge you up. Look at the one we did in Nasaba the other day. Everywhere I've gone, even pastors that senior pastors are calling me. He said, that message is not Get it for me. Pick it up and listen. Charge up yourself. When you come, glory is coming out of you. You enter things with boldness. How can I go for negotiation of contract and lose? How can I enter an exam hall and fail? How can I cover an interview and fail? When God lives in me, turn the fire that Satan. Stop being a beggar and be a manifester. Lift your right hand. Your season has come. Amen. If I hear your amen, you take your portion. Amen. And one of the ways to stir up yourself is massive tonguing. Every day this month, take at least one hour in tongues. Parato. Do that. That's one of the ways to steer up something in you. You don't talk grammar tired. Satan understands your grammar. He replies you in grammar. Talk tongues now. If you have my voice, say yes. yes. Talk tongues. Talk tongues. Talk tongues until something shifts in your inner man. Are you here? Yes, and please listen to me. When you are praying and when you are believing God and you suddenly start feeling as if things are going bad around you spiritual resistance is not a sign of weakness it's a sign that your enemy is reacting and enemies don't react until you are making impact don't be scared when you are in warfare and you start seeing things looking as if they are hard and challenging and all of that it means that your prayers are touching something is anybody hearing me? Foolish people, when they begin to make spiritual impact and something is reacting, they back off and start complaining. Then every time I pray, that's when things go bad. No! They are meant to react. You slap somebody, slap you back. Then knock him down. Are you hearing my voice here? Yes, sir. It's called spiritual warfare. We rest or not. Wrestling, you grab me, I grab you. Yes. Am I talking to somebody here today? So please fight and win. And then most importantly, if you say yes, yes, when we manifest God together as a church, the brightness becomes light over the city. Please help us to move together as a church. Let's shine the glory in the city. If you are here, say yes. yes. Every time you are separating yourself from doing something together with us, you are hurting now and moving forward. At your level, how many people have you brought to church this year? Last year, who joined you to church? You know, there are people that you look at and you ask God, why is this man here? Why is this woman here? It's not money he's bringing. It's not a kingdom service he's giving. It's not evangelism he's doing. He's just a liability in the kingdom. No, sir. You're bigger than that. Where are your friends and colleagues? What are you doing to put an imprint in the kingdom of God? That's how to know whether you are useful to God. Not that you dress well and came to church. Manifest God where you are. And God will manifest you to your worst time.